the 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 recession of 08 wasn't really due to anything in the in the work sector it was due to mostly i mean it it is it emanated from the us and it was mostly due to the housing market so my next question is that only like how long do you think this kind of a slowdown that is happening tech world could last uh, do you think any approximately when probably it can come back to normal <laughs> hello all welcome back to uncommon geeks my name is vasant i hope you all doing well in case if you are seeing me first time on the internet i'm a content creator i help people to clear their interview i made lot of series in the past which help lot of candidate to clear their interview in case if you are someone who have not seen those series i link the series somewhere on the screen and also in the description section now without wasting further time let's get started with the topic of the today i hope you have already seen in the thumbnail so today i'm interviewing someone called paul so paul is a career coach from usa he has more than two decades of experience and in it and related fields he is one of the most resourceful person very popular on linkedin and he gives lot of career advice for uh, mid and the little late career and he also talks about retirement so in this particular video we are going to discuss lot of aspects about the current layoff that is happening in us and india why layoffs are happening in usa how it will affect the indian market so if you are a part of layoff how to handle it if you are a youth Uh, how you should shape your career for next two to three decades because he is one of the career coach and one of the most popular career coach who is advice will definitely help you to focus your uh, prepare your career in a right direction okay so in case if you are just started your career or in mid range or senior whoever you are if you are from it or non it as well still it, this video is worth watching so please watch the video till yeah. the end so first of all thank you so much paul for accepting my invite and joining the session Uh, I've already introduced you in my introduction video, but uh, my audience definitely will not know more about you. Can we start by introducing? Can we start the overall session by your introduction? Sure, I'd be happy to introduce myself. Thank you very much, uh, Vasan, for the uh, the uh, opportunity to speak to your audience. Uh, my name is Paul Pichot. I am the president and founder of the Sarah Group Incorporated. We're a communications and career development training team headquartered here on the west coast of the United States in California uh in the beautiful wine country. I have a team of 20 trainers and we cross the globe training other professionals mostly in communication skills and then also career development skills. I've been doing that for 20 years. Uh over the past couple of years I've been funneling all of my training acumen into an online facet of the business which is helping folks in the later third of life i like to call it the third act of life uh find themselves as they come into their retirement years lots of folks in the us cannot afford to fully retire so they are looking for other ways to uh uh pay their bills other than their their weak pensions so uh i help them uh develop business ideas primarily consulting ideas lots of them driven online because it's easier uh than traveling around the world and and uh earning a dollar that way. Uh so I've been doing that for the past couple of years so my online business is gaining speed every every quarter. So uh, that's what I've been doing for the past 20 years and I I really enjoy training and coaching others in career development skills. Got it. It's lucky that in the last two years you started doing your online business that is the reason I happened to meet you. I saw your YouTube channel like I mentioned and thus we got contacted great Paul. So yes. yes. Well let me start with my first question Paul. I mean like I mentioned most of my audience I think almost all of my audience are from India and uh, the tech world in India is currently kind of a little bit of a I don't say crisis but a little bit of a slowdown so people are quite mm. worried okay. So as you yeah. know no matter what we call lot of indian tech still relies on the uh, ex- other countries there is lot of product companies in india also but still lot of indian companies rely on us europe and other countries for the projects and other things okay yeah. so my first question to you is like why do you think so much tech layoff is happening in us specifically i'm asking it's not just india across the world happening mm. and my colleagues are there in us and i know there also it is happening correct yeah. so why do you think so many tech layoffs might be happening in usa currently yeah they are happening and i I should men- should have mentioned in my introduction we're headquartered in the Bay Area uh, really? in San Francisco which is it, it, tech central. We got Silicon Valley just about an hour south of me here and lots of layoffs in the in the Bay Area. Google has laid off thousands. Um Facebook has laid off thousands as well. Um I I think one of the reasons one of the simple reasons why there's lots of layoffs today is because There was a there was an overemphasis put on hiring a few years ago. Uh coming out of the recession of 08, 
Um, lots of companies started staffing up. Facebook in particular started staffing up at a really high level. As a matter of fact, everybody questioned that when they were staffing up. Same with Google as well. Um, and, uh, you know, people thought, how are they going to afford to to keep all these people on? Then, of course, uh, you know, things got a little softer and they started laying them off. You get too much overhead and you got to lay them off. Then we had the the debacle with with Twitter and Elon Musk right. coming on and laying off people left and right. So we've had we've we've had the brunt of it. I think it was I think it was a bit of 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 hubris when they were hiring, uh, you know, just hiring way too many people. They were hiring people two and three people to do one person's job, and that just won't make the day when you when you're trying to turn a profit at the end of the day. So I think some of it is just an adjustment. Uh, to to the to the current market, and that's probably appropriate. Uh, but what these coders are going to do, I I don't know. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes Paul. What you say is makes sense because in India or across the world, these engineers are kind of one of the highly paid engineers. Like some random company cannot hire them because they are at a very high pay scale. So only yeah. either extremely funded startups or some company similar to like uh, whatever the company that they are laid off can hire them. Problem yeah. is all the companies in that vicinity have already laid off. Like Google, Facebook. Yeah. Like a yeah. guy leaves Google, he would join Facebook, Microsoft, etc. But they're all laying mm-hmm. off, which makes a little bit of a difficult situation for these guys considering the yeah. current situation. We have a lot of our programmers are going to and engineers are going to the East Coast, uh, where there are some new tech startups. Uh, centers, you know, uh, New York City now is a big tech center. Uh, there's there's lots of companies in Brooklyn and Manhattan specifically, and so lots of the lots of the engineers went that way. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'll just go to my next question, Paul. Like, um, as far I know, the one of the major recession that happened in the past was 2008, when a lot of companies have laid their employees and they were not sure where the world and the economy are heading. And after that, I don't see any such a big recession happen anywhere across the world. So now also, I don't call it a recession. Definitely, we haven't probably not encountered because no company laid off more than 10% associates. Unlike 2008, where a lot of people have laid, uh, laid off. So, but you were a part of the 2008 layoff, whether directly or indirectly, you might have got affected. What do you see? Mm-hmm. Is there a difference between back then and now? Uh, that is what my question, uh, Paul. Yeah, the, the, the recession of 08 wasn't really due to anything in the in the work sector. It was due to mostly, I mean, it, it, it emanated from the U.S. and it was mostly due to the housing market. Uh, we had, you know, loans that were out there that were not good loans. And that whole housing market came crashing down. Well, housing is a large part of any economy. I'm sure it's a huge, I don't know what the percentage is, but I'm sure it's a huge part of the Indian economy as well. And so when that came crashing down, everything started falling apart. Uh, and we certainly were affected. The years 08, 09, and 10 were not the best. We we started to dig our way out of it uh, halfway through uh, 2010. And then 2011, it started to recover a little bit more. But I watched, literally watched the valuation of my company just go down over those years. You know, a lot that I had invested in uh, just just vanished. Um, uh, so th- that, that ended up, coming back. I think now what's happening with the with layoffs it's 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 due to that 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 hubris of of a couple of years before. I don't think it has its underpinnings okay. in anything fundamentally economic. Right. It's it it was just, you know, when you when you have Facebook decide that they need to hire 10,000 more um, uh, coders to monitor the, the site and make sure nothing uh, that goes against their rules is happening. Uh, and they just hire so many people. And then after that, they figure out how to get machines to do it. They end up laying everybody off. So, you know, it, it was it was easy to get human bodies in. I don't mean to trash Facebook a lot, but it was easy to get the human bodies in. And then it's just as easy to remove them when you get you know, machines to do that work for you. So um, I think it's a little different this time around. And because of that, I don't think it's very long lived at all. Really, I think it's just an adjustment, just a correction. Exactly. I good that Paul, actually, a lot of my audience will be happy listening to this because someone who has faced be a part of 2008 recession. And unlike India, US faced a lot of problems in 2008 uh, compared to because as you said, it was centered around US then bubbled across the world. 
uh, which yeah. is good so my next question is that only like how long do you think this kind of a slowdown that is happening in tech world could last uh, do you think any approximately when probably it can come back to normal <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had a crystal ball for you. <laughs> um uh, no, I don't at all, but but I let me put it this way. I'll put it as 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 easily or as softly as I can. I don't think it will be that long. I think what we're really seeing is a correction. Now, if you're in the middle of that, if you got laid off, it doesn't feel like a correction to you. Uh it feels <laughs> it feels like a recession. Um but I think all of those engineers uh, and and tech people across the board will find homes they'll find they'll find new work uh it, it, and i don't think it will take as long the 08 recession literally took years to come out of i think this will be a matter uh, you know if i have to guess uh, of of a, a year or so you know i i don't think it'll take more than that and i think the smartest coders will find homes right away because there's always new tech coming out exactly. i mean you know google might be firing but tiktok is hiring i mean exactly. it, it, it's just it's just it's that yin and yang that goes on constantly exactly yes yes paul maybe like you said from the 2008 recession the whole world has learned a lesson like they make yeah. sure such thing does not happen in future or kind of pre prepared whenever such slowdown comes uh, kind of starts so all governments are very precautious now to not to let such situation happen okay yeah Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Next next question is very important question Paul. I think it is all across the world people are kind of in this particular dilemma now. See there is AI artificial intelligence is coming up with much more uh, exuberance than any time in the past. There is so much of um, um uh, tool so many tools are coming and they all are quite brilliant. I'm not just talking about a chat GPT and now I th- just just yesterday I think uh, Google also announced about a tool called Bard. is a competitor for chat gpt and that, more yeah. such to- yeah more such tools are coming and doesn't just restrict to it but to an extent as it tech is kind of comparatively paid little higher so a lot of emphasis on that basically what do you think uh, paul it's not i don't think it's just the ai in your career you might have seen lot of auto- automations something that was manual might have been shifted to some automation do you think it mm-hmm. is threat for human uh, or engineers basically for <laughs> their job or what is your take ah uh, philosophical question yeah. um <clears throat> Yeah, I I think I think it's very important the, what AI is doing things like ChatGPT yeah. yeah. uh, and Google's new product. Um I don't th- I think like with all technology it it just shuffles the deck. So, you know, you know, our, our, mostly what we're worried about here in the states, most of the news is about there's a fear that students will use this to write papers right and that's all we're thinking about no 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 it goes way beyond that uh when you can have when you can interface with a machine and it can respond to you in very human like language this changes for example the whole um uh therapeutic uh industry right uh what's it going to do to psychiatrists and psychologists now i've 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 experimented with chat gpt myself a little bit and I don't find currently that it really is so elegant at what it does that it would replace me or or my services. You know, it, it's it's very basic. I've asked it, you know, give me a a 200 word article on whatever. And what it turns out is is pretty basic. It's not I mean, the English is good. It's it's solid English. There's no grammatical problem with it, but the ideas aren't very deep. I, they're 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 the same ideas we could have gotten off of Google 10 years ago. Uh, you know, if you just typed in a Google search about that. Um now we're just getting it scrolling across our screens. Um but AI is the thing to watch for sure. And I think what a lot of those engineers will find is that they're going to shift from, you know, social media jobs or manufacturing jobs to AI jobs instead. You know, I I've also noticed in my own research on on in particular chat gpt that every time i've logged on to it it's gotten slower and slower they're 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 trying to catch up with all the demand and they're trying to add new components to the system so somebody's doing that programming right yeah. there there's got to be a lot of coders out there doing that so i think i think there's a lot of opportunity there in particular for tech workers got it got it that so i i also second with you paul and recently one video became quite viral in india regarding the chat gpt where the the author in the video she said the same uh, machines cannot do a work that humans have not already done so she gave an example of layoff exactly. like 30000 40000 
No, nobody yeah. has laid up so many people. Only humans can do do such layoffs, yeah. and machine cannot do such layoffs. So, ChatGPT can do something that we have already done. Probably, it cannot yeah. do something. It cannot find a cure to cancer, but no. maybe it will help in the process. Like some computations yeah, which certainly help in the process. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm also in the same uh, opinion of you, Paul. Probably any job that was rudimentary, like it's not having any progression, it's become very manual kind of jobs. They kind of can be taken up by AI or automation in the long run. I just mm-hmm. tell one small incident that Jack Ma has said. Jack Ma is founder of Alibaba, which is the biggest e-commerce right. site in uh, uh, China. So where earlier basketballs did not, the net of the basketball is actually closed. So you put a ball and ball wouldn't come down. Okay, and there used to be some people who are having a ladder and they used to pick the ball and give it back to the players. And some right. some brilliant guy thought, why simply this man it required? Let's just cut the net and the ball comes down automatically. And they started protesting this one who owned the ladders because their right. job was right. uh, on that. So he said, like always, the automation will keep on coming. Anything that is manual or that is not adding a lot of values will be replaced yeah. eventually by machines. That's what I think yeah. can happen with respect to IT as well. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah, I think I think your 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 story illustrates if if your job is repetitive and manual, right. yes, you better get out of that job real fast because exactly. uh, that yes. that will be replaced by a machine very soon. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Paul. Yeah. Well, this is another any important question. I think this is something that is very like uh, related to you actually from the career advice point of view. So it's not yep. about US or India, Europe. Youths all across the world are spending like crazily. They make good amount of money compared to their parents or their grandparents that they are making. Yeah. They are wealthiest generation I can call whatever they are there currently. But most end up spending a lot of money also. So some some countries they are spending fifty percent, some countries they are spending even seventy percent, and depends on individual. There people are spending even ninety percent of their overall income. And whenever such situation like this happens, so it becomes quite mm-hmm. difficult for them to survive, especially layoffs or market corrections, etc. I think US spends more compared to India. India still it's a conservative market, but all across the world, youths are in generally spending a lot of money. So what is your advice? Should they be spending so much money, or what is your advice for the savings so that when a tough situation like this happen, they can be more like in the content that Paul is sharing. In case if if it is so, please like the video and comment whatever you are feeling and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon if you are not already done because it takes immense effort to get someone like Paul on the channel. And as you know, my whole motto of starting a content creation is help to ca- help candidate to clear their interview. I'll be able to reach my goal very quick if I get more impressions and more likes and comments. So please like and comment and subscribe to my channel if you're not already done. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And that question has an easy one word answer. Save. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spend. Yeah, we are notoriously poor savers here in the yeah. U.S. Yes. Uh, and that's that's what drives my business right now as I counsel and coach people in that latter third of life. Uh, they usually they usually come to me because they haven't saved. Yeah. Uh, and what are they going to do as they age? They need to transfer their skills to something that's a little bit easier on their body. So that means the online environment. Um, I think what we have to do, you know, this is a real a, a, a cultural question. We we have to resist that urge to buy, 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 to have the latest new thing. Um, one of the things, one of the little things I've done, for example, you know, we all live with these. I don't have my phone near me. We all live with these great uh, uh, smartphones in our pockets. I have deliberately chosen to not buy a new smartphone every time it comes out. I have the iPhone like millions of people do. And uh, I don't buy a new one every time a new one comes out. You know, I, I usually skip two or three. I honestly evaluate, does this new one have features that I have to live with uh, or I can't do without? And at least three or four years uh, uh, in a row, I'll answer no to that question. So there's little things you could do. I think we buy into a culture of new, new, new. Uh, and and we have, to, we have to resist that, especially when you're younger. Um, I have three children they're all young adults and i coach them all the time invest 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 uh that's the most important thing to do property uh, i think uh, pretty much anywhere in the globe yes. is is uh, you know the the safest investment uh but you can get uh, uh money funds and 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 get into the stock market all that those are little safer bets too but invest I really consider those investments in yourself. That's really, really what's important. Um, uh, that's the easiest thing to do. Uh, but not getting into that culture of I've got to buy, buy, buy. I got to have the latest car, yeah. the latest. Uh, uh, this is a real. T- I learned something from my dad uh, when my father was 
younger and, and growing up through his career, whenever he bought a car, when the car payments were done, he made that same payment to himself for an equal amount of time afterwards. So in the US, it's typical to have a car loan for three years. Yeah. So three years after the car was paid for, he was still paying himself that same amount. So when six years was up, he had enough money for a new car again. Actually, he had more because of the interest uh, that accrued. So that's a, that's a good way to do it. It's it's think about ways you could pay yourself first. I think is really important. Got it, got it, Paul. I think yeah. Just to add on to your point, in the whole mm -hmm. world now, there is a movement called like a minimalistic living. I'm a big believer of minimalistic living. Don't consume yeah. anything that is not really required. It could be a small tissue paper or a mobile or a gadget car, anything that you said. Just yep. evaluate you really need. It's not just on yeah. the saving the money part. It's like a saving the earth part. Like you don't have yeah. more consumption. Less consumption will make the world a better place. Anything that mm -hmm. could be. Anything that you think is not really required, don't consume it so that you save your money and also saving the earth. Correct? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, you bring in that aspect of saving the earth. That's a really important one. We've got to recycle and reuse things left and right. We, my wife and I do a number of those little things. It would be too lengthy to get into all of that, but a mm. uh, number of those things, you know, we, we just, we live in a throwaway culture and we've got to stop that. Exactly. Stop that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Paul. Now, again, this question is quite maybe interesting for you. See, basically we both live in a different financial conditions, et cetera, but human across the world are quite same, I believe. Okay. The societies could vary, but people are not very different. So my question to you is like a uh, lot of people like me will be anticipating this. Like what is the right age for retirement or does that really uh, that exist? Any age for retirement? Does it really exist? Because I personally believe that after a point, you should retire and do what you basically like. A lot of people may not like the work that they're doing and they want to retire and do what they really mm -hmm. want to do. Yeah. What do you think the right age, uh, Paul? For oh, that's a big question. <laughs> and that's right in my wheelhouse, we say here in America. Um yeah, this is this is a moving target, actually. The answer to your question is a moving target because primarily because we're living longer and healthier these days. So I'm 66 years old as we're taping this today. I don't feel like quitting. 66 is the normal retirement age in the US, right? 65, 66 is when folks used to retire. But because of three things. One, we're living healthier. So people I, like myself, I don't feel 66. I know I am. I used to run marathons. I don't run marathons anymore. My body won't do that. But I still have plenty of energy. I can still talk. I can still communicate. So I'm living healthier than my father did at 66. Um, we're living longer. Because of that health, we're living longer lives. My father is still alive, still with us. He's 96 years old. Uh, his mind is still there. It's amazing. It's amazing. Now, I know everybody's not like that, but I just use them as an illustration that there are more productive years ahead. So we're living longer and healthier. And because of that, we want to do something. So the idea of retiring gets pushed off in the US. Uh, couple that with the fact, I missed the third reason, couple that with the fact that a lot of people can't afford to retire completely. They can't afford to give up. So if you don't want to give up and you can't afford to anyway, why give up? So lots of people are taking on what we call their passion project. Yeah. They're doing doing work that they felt they always wanted to do, but couldn't get around to it because their career wouldn't allow them to do that. Uh, it took up too much time. So um, a lot of folks are terminating their careers at, say, an early age, like 50, and then going off and starting this passion project, which usually is a is an in-house business. It's their own business. It's something they want to do. They want to move from being an employee to being an entrepreneur. Um, and that's easier to do with technology today. You know, if you have a laptop and a phone, you're in business. That's all you need. So, um, so I think that that age. To get back to your question, that age is a bit of a moving target. Lots of people, like myself, are not considering retiring in the U.S. until they hit seventy, right? Yeah. Until they hit seventy. I, for me, that's just four years away. Yeah. If I feel as as good uh, I do physically today as I do at seventy, and I feel I still want to do more in my business, I'm going to yeah. keep going. I'm going to keep going. Got it, Paul. So yeah, yeah. just to conclude, basically, it's not like there's no right age for retirement. Look for your passion. Probably if you're yeah. unfit for something, you'll be fit for something else. So identify yeah. where you'll be fit at a particular age and you go to that particular uh, stream and spend your time. Right? Exactly. Rather, yes, yes. So Paul, we have come to close to the end of the session. It has been great talking to you. 
but uh, i just want you to know what are your closing thoughts especially since most of my audience are youngsters who have just started their career or less than 5 years of their experience so they have yeah. close to 20, at least 20 years of career ahead of them uh, id yeah. non it etc what is just your closing thoughts what is your what do you want to say to them Ah, uh, I'm glad you gave me this opportunity because uh, I I I love to speak to younger folks and tell them my closing thought. I've got one thought in particular: invest in yourself. We have a tendency to once we get out of our training and get into the workforce, just do that job over and over again. And so, yeah, we're gaining some experience, but for the most part, we're doing the same thing over and over and over. You've got to always look. I think it's important to always look to advance your skills. Uh so don't get trapped in that box of doing the same kind of coding for year after year after year after year. You want to add to your skills constantly. That means an investment in yourself. So I believe strongly in continuing education. You should always be looking out for uh you know more certificates and it it it's not just limited to um uh specific uh certificate certificated skills. I also mean in terms of personal development as well. Look to grow that personality of yours. Communication skills are very important. Even with things like we discussed chat GPT, you know, we we human beings like to communicate with other human beings. So getting better at that is really important. 20 years training people in communications has drilled that into me that uh you need to continue to get better and better at communication. So I think investing in yourself is the key to really leading a successful and fulfilled life and career. Got it. Thanks Paul. So Paul like I mentioned we have already read the end of the section. So I I really thoroughly enjoy talking to you because it's a rare opportunity that I personally get to talk to someone who has a immense experience as yours. Um but before we close a lot of audience might have also liked the overall conversation of you. If they want to talk to you like uh, what are the different means that they can connect with you and uh, ask their questions or is there some training that you are doing that my my audience can uh, enroll to? Yeah, I I do. I have a number of training programs that are out there three in particular that would that might be uh, of interest to your your um group uh your audience rather one in emotional intelligence i have a short course on emotional intelligence is out there and another in personality assessment uh which is my version of personality typing i think when we know each other's personality better it allows communication to flow a lot better and people that are working on teams very often there's a clash of personalities if you understand how that person receives information you can speak to that person a little bit more freely so i have those two courses are are out right now if anybody wanted to get in touch with me or connect to any of my media youtube and tiktok would be the number one and number two places to to be um we could put this in the show notes sure. right vasant yeah. Uh, yeah. yes so yes. uh you could put my my tiktok handle and my youtube channel it's it they're both under my name the youtube is paul pashot the tiktok is paul f pashot my middle initial there um that would be the best uh and then they, everybody can get in touch with me directly through through tiktok and youtube probably be the best way to do it got it got it nice talking to you paul that's all from my end have a good day thank you okay. namaste thank you very much namaste it is it was a very great session i liked a lot talking to paul the one main reason is he is from us and he has almost more than two decades of uh, overall it and related field experience and his thoughts towards the recession market getting slowed down the layoffs etc are quite unique and different compared to what is on the indian context correct and these are the people who really witnessed 2008 recession they really know how tough it is and i believe you like the content whatever he shared how to shape your career how to fight the recession etc okay if so please like the video and comment whatever you are feeling and subscribe to my channel uncommon geeks if you are not already subscribed and follow me on medium linkedin because i write very actively and i'll write lot about upcoming sessions and whom we are interviewing and i'll i'll also post my insights about the interview before posting it on uh, youtube in the linkedin so please follow me on linkedin medium and download our projects from github thank you so much catch you in next video